What if you already have absolutely everything you need to feel satisfied and even joyful about your life? Does this seem like a totally wild, impossible idea? Welcome to Audiobook Reviews in 5. This is Jana, also known as Jana, and today I'm reviewing A Guide to the Good Life, The Ancient Art of Stoic Joy by William V. Irvine and read by James Patrick Cronin. I've been reading about Stoicism and trying to apply it to my life for just under a decade. Although I appreciate the history and details about Stoic philosophers, I'm most interested in the practical application of Stoic ideas in everyday life. Since most Stoic philosophers lived in the ancient Roman Empire, it's helpful to have a guide to put these ideas from classical antiquity into modern practice. William B. Irvine is a professor of philosophy, and the Guide to the Good Life is one of the most useful references I return to when I want to review the core practices that make Stoicism such a useful philosophy. He makes Stoicism practical and relatable, and in a nutshell, Stoic philosophy is based on the idea that satisfaction in life, which is also described as tranquility, rests on our ability to accept and ultimately embrace life as it is, no matter who or where we are. As Irvine sums it up, to be satisfied with little is not a failing, it's a blessing. One of the most powerful habits that Irvine illustrates is negative visualization. Take a moment to deliberately imagine how things in your life could go tragically wrong. How you could lose what you have, your partner, your child, or even your job. Or if that seems a little too morbid to you, consider what you currently have in your life that your ancestors might scarcely believe possible. Antibiotics, air conditioning, cell phones, windows, laser eye surgery, and fresh fruit in January. Okay, maybe this sounds silly or too simple to be true, but it works. And the reason it works is that it allows us to continually rediscover all that gives our life meaning and pleasure versus taking things for granted, as we all tend to do, which is also called the hedonic treadmill or hedonic adaptation. Another helpful stoic exercise covered here is the internalization of goals which incidentally might best be compared to the serenity prayer, which most of you have probably heard at least once, albeit leaving religion as optional when it comes to stoicism. Or, as Goodreads reviewer Roy Lotz compares it to, in the language of self-help, internalization of goals is a focus on the process and not the product, the effort and not the outcome. This is directly related to the Stoic practice of cultivating an attitude of accepting life as it comes, and ultimately, appreciating lessons learned through trial and error, or even insights gleaned from tragedy in what modern psychologists might describe as post-traumatic growth. Since Stoic ideas have been around for a couple thousand years, you might already be practicing some of these and not even realize it. For example, if you enjoy mindfulness meditation. Buddhism also holds much in common with Stoicism, which Irvine touches on briefly. And he also addresses the common misperception that accepting things as they are leads to complacency or even morbid rumination, which isn't the case. And he cites a particularly helpful example of a meteorologist who studies tornadoes without necessarily living in dread of being killed by one. My only criticism of this audiobook is that the narration is a bit monotone, so it's not a performance that adds a lot of value for me. That said, I definitely consider picking up a hard copy of this title so I can make notes in it. Now, although I've mentioned I've been trying to apply Stoic practices in my life, I fully admit I am not totally successful in achieving consistent results. After all, simple isn't always easy. 
But the point is that making stoicism a regular practice, or even a habit, tends to lead to greater benefits over time. It's not a once and done aha moment. And I can say that without a doubt, stoic practices have made my life happier and more meaningful overall. That's why I recommend this title, since Irvine's suggestions are simple and can be applied by nearly anyone, anywhere. Check it out and let me know what you think. That's all for this episode of Audiobook Reviews in 5. Thanks for listening. If you have not yet done so, please subscribe to Audiobook Reviews in 5 on your favorite platform. By subscribing, you help increase the profile of this podcast and chances of other listeners finding it. I look forward to checking in with you all again soon. Please stay safe and be well. Thank you.